Um, the recording started. I just texted Will. Okay. All right. Well, we're just going to go ahead and get started with attendance. Um, I'll start off. Alejandro Casillas present. And then whoever wants to go. Matthew Rathbun present. Rivarco present. Gabe Trujillo present. <laughs> you make me laugh so much. I love it. It comes Michael Mike. Michael Warner present. Michael Warner present. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Um, <laughs> who wants to read the mission statement? Me. I've never theory. read it. Our mission is to support the evolving needs of MSU Denver students by advocating in their best interests to enhance the university experience and opportunities. I think it should say their university experience and opportunities, actually. Um, approval of the agenda from last meeting. We don't meet quorum yet, so I don't know if we can vote on approval oh. of the agenda. Yeah, you're right. John just walked in, so he'll probably join in a minute. Cool. Well, I guess we can wait for him in the meantime. Okay. Um, should we just do quick updates then for those who are here? Sure. sure. Board of Trustees. Um, I have no updates um, once election stuff is finalized. Um, my goal is to like bring a presentation with like pictures of all the new council um, to the board of trustees meeting so that like, these people know who these people are and like have a face name and stuff like that. So, um, but yeah, so once I get that, we'll be chilling. That's all I have though. Cool. Um, CACAB. Awesome, okay. So today we we had our CCAP meeting where we discussed two policies. Uh, the first policy was regarding like flyers and posters on campus and, and how AHEC deals with those um, and stuff and such. And so we discussed that policy and, and and gave it any feedback that we have um, and also are looking to hear back from them um, regarding how big the, these policies can be. And then also we we talked about the the peaceful protest and, and freedom of speech policy um, to 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 really fully to better understand how how protests are, are run on campus and stuff, um, which was a very very interesting conversation, um, especially when it came to the idea of freedom of speech versus hate speech and, and where those fine lines are, um, and so we just discussed those policies. Gave our feedback and, and are waiting um, to have two two questions <laughs> from those top policies answered further, and I think overall that was most of the message that that was there. And then, and yeah, and and, and Will is also here, so he can provide any more for Stacab. Cool, thank you. Go ahead, Will. I will say uh, thank you again for uh, covering most of it. There wasn't uh, there was talk about you know defining hate speech during the meeting and how uh that can be a difficult thing to define legally um so we we definitely reached out to um their legal uh side with those questions so we'll get back with more uh concrete answers on specifics but uh gabe covered everything very well thanks gabe um, I got Matthew and then Dr. Barone. Did they give a time frame on when they'd get back to you or just the vague, we'll get back to you? Um, so it, there wasn't like a specific uh, timeline, but I'm assuming by next meeting, but let me not assume I'm going to reach out to them and get like a clarification as to when. Uh, good question, Matt. Uh, Dr. Brown. Hi. Yeah, I was just curious what exactly was shared around the poster policies, just so you all know. Um, 
we did uh, from CMEI sent out a targeted message to all student organizations, um, student clubs and advisors around posting policies and protesting policies. Um, and we did that in collaboration with AHEC and ACPD. Like I had them read the message and we we're all on the same page before that was sent out. And so I am curious about what was shared in SACAB specifically around that. Um, and if there have been some changes or updates or are there concerns? I know there have been concerns about banners and posters in the Tivoli and things being left up for a really long time. Those are things I know about, but I'm curious if there's more. Um, Matt, if you have a direct comment to that, if not, then I'll go to Will. Or sorry, I, not Matt, um, Gabe. Awesome, thank you. Yeah, I think um, what more so regarding one, the the incons inconsistencies that, that there were about applying like like policies about firing and chalking specifically. Um, mm -hmm. One ticket member f f from CCD brought up um, that 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 during a protest from SDS, uh, they they chalked some messages um, on the ground and, and and in other areas as well, and, and, and how those messages on the next day w w were immediately immediately like uh, pa power washed off of like the area they were on versus versus other chalking messages from I, I believe like a, a religious aspect of it um that <laughs> that have been up for like a long long time and like no one really paid attention to those in the uh -huh. sense of getting rid of them and so the other it was more sure about those inconsistencies of of who who, who the policies apply to and, and when the policies are applied and then also like um when it comes down to to to, to the policy of have having too many flyers being like thrown or well, having let's see what's well, how how can I word this better um when it comes to, to firing and, and having a lot of flyers um th that either are just get, get like littered around campus or just get um thrown and not put up appro appropriately and mm -hmm. and how and how some, some student orgs or some folks can get charged a fee if mm -hmm. like a lot of their like uh, fly, firing material is found to 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 be spread out, not okay. following like guidelines that they have. So like if, if someone just like throws a bunch of flyers everywhere, um, out of the blue, <laughs> instead of like putting them up appropriately, then they could get fined theoretically. Mm, okay, thank you. That's. That's helpful, actually. Thank you very much, Gabe. Yeah. Thank you, Gabe. Uh, Will, you have your hand up? No, okay. Um, so we're Sorry. just gonna stop there and then go My back bad. to, you're all good. Um, go back real quick. For those of you who joined late, if, if you can uh, make your presence known, that way we can approve the agenda. Okay. Uh, can you hear me? John is here. I'm also here. Oh, and then uh, approval of the agenda. A motion to do so. I second. Cool. All in favor? Aye. 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 Any no's? Any abstentions? Cool. You shall not pass. Uh, Will, you have your hand up? Yeah, sorry about that. Um, to add on to what Gabe was saying, there's that one uh, rule that they're pushing for that we push back on because of the wording wasn't um, specific enough to like littering on with flyers on the ground on campus. Uh, but we'll hear back from uh, their their legal on like wording and you know seeing if we can make it more specific to that. Um, but yeah, that's 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 all I have on that. Cool, thank you. Um, moving on to accountability committee. <clears throat> um, aside from the fact that we, this is kind of as um, a side um, group in safety task force, 
meeting with Taylor Tackett's office next Friday after our meeting at 3.30. There's nothing else to report except we'll be planning and working on something that what I hope will be a safety event that TSAC is part of for Welcome Week. And a lot of planning is going to go into this if this happens. So Alejandro, hoping he can come. And I know Will is interested in, in being there representing SACAP. Thank you, Ree. Mm -hmm. um, moving on to budget committee. Um, not really much of an update. I mean, our budget is, hasn't really changed much. Um, we do have a few um, ideas coming up that will be taking a bit of the budget um, down. So we'll talk more about it once those details are officially, officially confirmed. Moving on to PR committee. Yeah, so first off, I want to throw out a huge thank you to Will and Sam for helping out with uh, Spring Fling. Um, but also, our next step is food for finals. Um, I don't know if anyone knows the caterer that Denny found, um, but I was looking at the budget during the budget meeting. Um, and I think we're going to try and increase the budget uh, for food for finals uh, because based on last semester, we were running out around like 1030. Like 10, 1030, so it was running out really quick. Um, still going to do the massage therapist because that always seems to be a hit. And just try and get all that together and then uh, pull together another resolution for the school supplies for next year. Cool. And the, do you by any chance have the name of the caterer or no? I don't. It's okay. if it's the if the if it's the one Denny's friends with is the extracho people, the new approved caterers. They helped us oh. with Welcome Week last year. They did a presentation a couple of times this past semester. But if you can get all that information to me by Wednesday, Matt, next week is pretty hectic as well. Um, just so we can get ahead on ordering that, please. Yes, let me with you. Can you send me the link for that caterer, though? Or is it just on uh, AHEX website? Uh, yeah, it's on AHEX website, but okay. if you want to go through with them, just talk to Denny because she already has the the contact and have her put you and connect with them. All right, I just want to be able to look at what we could order. Cool. Uh, Michael, you have your hand up. Um, just letting you know, I'll be in another meeting too, but I'll still be here. So I'll just be using the chat. All right. Um, cool. Moving on to sustainability committee. For Gabe. Uh, for me, wait, how did question how did I end up with this aspect um, of sustainability committee um, that's a, just a question I have in general um, because I am not part of the sustainability committee so therefore I do not have any information regarding sustainability committee so I don't know if either Matt potentially or anyone else who who has stated that they want to like help out with the project has anything I on my side have nothing uh, regarding MSC Denver sustainability. Oh, except that um, Cassie, Cassie Cata Walker from from ASCP, uh, she's looking into the the policies that have been passed by each institution regarding uh, like green procurement. And so, for example, the green purchasing agreement that was passed, uh, I think, like last year, um, or two years ago, something like that. That green purchasing agreement. Since it was passed, and since if we're trying to see is it actually be, being enforced? Because if you look into the green purchasing agreement, it goes beyond just um, creating the green pur purchasing funds, but also requiring organizations and events to to ha to be green as well. Mm -hmm. And so, if that requirement is not being met, then why is that, and how can that be changed? To reflect the the actual ad, actuality of that um, of that what's it called of that 
policy that was passed. OK, cool. Um, yeah, one thing I will say is I know I did mention that I would help out with it, but honestly, I haven't really done much with it. Um, haven't really heard much about it either, so I'm assuming there hasn't really been progress with it. Um, Ree, you have your hand up. Yeah, I just wanted to say that um, I think that Matt was, and actually he had his hand up before me, but Matt um, really was going to take on the rest of this for this term, but whomever takes it on next term, that um, purchasing agreement needs to be part of it as it was when Taylor led it and got that passed last year. So whatever the communication needs to be to go out to the university and whatever university arm needs to do that along with us, it can be a, a co-message, you know, right? We can take some credit for that too. So that's what I'd recommend. And I, you know, happy to be when we have our transition meeting on May 17th, talking about that with the new council. But Matt, I think Matt wanted to talk about this. Yeah, sorry, Matt. I see that you put your hand down and then put it back up. But go ahead. Yeah, that was Mike doing. I was thinking about it for a sec. Um, I definitely want to support these projects and I've kind of been planting some seeds. Um, but I will admit I have limited capacity right now. But if it is possible and get elected for next year, um, these are projects that I would want to really take a part in and either get other council members on board with the state ability or work on them in some other aspects. Sweet. All right. Uh, moving on to. Oh, well, open floor announcements. Does anybody have any open floor announcements? Uh, I seen Ree had her hand up first and then John. I wanted to share. Um, uh, Dr. Bruin had asked me to be part of the. Um, Total rewards HR group because they were putting through the. Um, the calendar acknowledgement, I guess, changing the calendar for the university to be when we observe Indigenous Peoples Day. And it was the vote, you know, some of you voted on this. I had asked you to to take, you know, go on that link and make sure our voices were heard. They call us the Student Advisory Council. I corrected them on that, but anyway, it was involved in all the voting information, but it has been determined that they're going to observe it on December 31st, so New Year's Eve, which replaces the university president's designated holiday. But I think the idea was they sought feedback from all over the campus and with stakeholders, and um, it's in addition to the 11 legal holidays. Um, it's celebrated across the U.S. on um in October, the second Monday in October, and it was formally commemorated in 2021 with a presidential proclamation, if you know that or not, I'm not sure. So, but the state of Colorado has not officially officially recognized it as a holiday. So this HR and total rewards team proposed the options to be either in um, October or on December 31st. And it was chosen to be that date because it supports um, the university and being able to meet academic responsibilities for students in October. And so it'll be talked about in October, but celebrated on the 21st. And I think messaging will go out um, accordingly on that date across the whole university. But I just wanted you to note, so thank you for voting for that whatever you voted for, and um, I actually voted for the October one, but I knew with scheduling it would probably end up being in, uh, in December. So it's going to be part of the published calendar for the university, and that's due to good work that um, Naomi Jekas, um had started with TSAC. So that's something that TSAC has been able to, to have a hand in. That's all. Thank you, Ree. Um, mm -hmm. John, you were next in the stack. Yes, I'm not going to be at uh, next Friday's meeting because I'm going to be at the Men of Color Leadership Summit. So I wanted to let you all know that that's something I've been wanting to attend with people of color. Yeah, I think there's going to be maybe three of us or four of us that are going to be attending that from the oh. TSEC as well. So um, I'm not sure how that's going to go about. Um, 
Gabe, I wait. Uh, I seen Will. I think it was Will. You put your hand up, but then down. Are you good? I had a question for Ray, but she answered it. Okay, cool. Uh, Gabe. Oh, yeah. So, so with that, I'm wondering then, what do we, what do we still? Let's see. Do we have enough people to actually meet then next week? Because let's say because the John's gonna be out, and I'm gonna be out, and I'm just wondering like, how many of us will be out, um, for our own reasons versus actually having a meeting? Because if there's just like two people, is that like a productive meeting? You know? Yeah. Um. I think it's just gonna be uh, updates, but I don't think there's gonna be anything that's gonna be voted on. But we'll see. Um. John, you have your hand up and then read. So I have a suggestion. Since we've been, been doing remote, what about maybe having a Saturday meeting for about an hour really quickly or th another? No, I see you shaking your head. Mm -hmm. <laughs> OK. Yeah, sorry about that. Uh, Bree. I um, was going to suggest since we talked in the budget committee about um, a few things that are be that will be coming forward that maybe for next Friday, we have a lot of reading and things to review with resolutions, amendments and things, and then we can just vote on it the, the Friday after, right? Which is, I think, May 3rd. Mm -hmm. And we really need to work, make sure we can be present for that because you know we're gonna be winding down. We have a lot of things to put through that are gonna be important for the upcoming council. And um, so I'd suggest we just make next Friday um, a reading day for important materials they're going to be sent out to consider for voting for the week after. That sounds like a good idea to me. Um, I seen Dr. Brown had her hand up and then I think Armando too. Okay, Dr. Brown. Yeah, we're probably going to say the same thing. Um, <laughs> May 3rd is inauguration day. Um, so, and then the next Friday after that is graduation. Um, which is May 10th. So if you all are not going to meet next Friday, which is fine, if you want to propose your resolutions or whatever you want to do and have that be like a time for people to review, maybe you do some kind of, um, I don't know, maybe you do like online voting or something like that to vote on those things as opposed to a formal meeting, since we won't have meetings for a while or you won't have meetings because of inauguration and then it's May 10th, which is graduation. And so I think the next meeting after that is the transition meeting. Um, do you mind telling me again, what time is um, inauguration? Uh, Armando, <laughs> I don't know. It'll be during the meeting time, so it's 12.30. Yeah. Okay, cool. Um, cool, thank you. Uh, I mean, I'm, I think that sounds like a good idea. I don't know what the rest of the council has to say about that. I'm assuming no input. Um, I, Dr. Brown, do you have anything else to say? No, sorry, meant to put okay. my hand down. No worries. Um, Will? I have something that's unrelated, so I can hold my my announcement slash question if everyone else's hands are up for what we just I mean, discussed so i would say you should just say it i mean the time that okay. you're describing so, it so um i asked kenny recently to start a formulating a folder for our cycle of tsac uh, the stuff and everything all the bills and all that kind of stuff and I wanted to ask uh, the advisors, since we already made like a document stating those things, um, how that would look different from um, having one of like two sheets of paper describing them versus having a um, record keeping folder for this year. Because Kenny was asking me that and I wanted to get well, a direct answer from the advisors. Sure. Well, I would say you need both. You need a folder that has all of the resolutions that you all have passed 
um, for the year for just documentation and transitioning to the new council so they have record. But then the other, the, an, the annual update or annual report that we asked you all to contribute to, that's just a summary. Remember, that's just like an executive right. summary. It isn't like the full, full resolutions and bills, right? Like right. that's just, um, so they're not the same thing. And I think you need both. Right. Okay. Just wanted like yeah. clarity. Yeah. Clarity. Um, but yeah, Kenny, there, there's that for you. If you have any more questions, I'm assuming you you do. So, cool. Um, Kenny, you had your hand up, but is that a direct comment to that or? Yeah, uh, I have a question. So, this folder, would it, uh, what would it consist of? Just past resolutions and. Uh, Penny, I think we already worked on it when I told you to just organize all the past resolutions and everything. Remember okay. when we were doing this stuff for Dr. Simpkins? Okay. So just keep that format. Cool. Cool. Sounds good. Um, Re. Oh my gosh, did I forget what I was going to say? <laughs> <laughs> um, I think it'd be great if we did the online voting and had the series of votes so we get that stuff passed. We know we want to get these few things um, approved and you know, if there's a, t I don't know how you set that up, but there's a time frame where people are allowed to go in and do that. Armando is shaking, vigorously nodding. So I love that he knows how to do that stuff so we can get that through. And there'll be accompanying documents for each of these votes with resolutions and amendments for you to read. So we'll take that seriously and get that done. It'll be fantastic. Thank you. Perfect. Uh, just give me a second, Armando. Um, it is now 1 p.m., so we're going to go into public comment. If there's anybody here for public comment, please make yourself known. And it looks like there's nobody. But if anybody comes in, we'll just stop. So uh, go ahead, Armando. Um, I was going to say for next week's meeting, if we're transitioning to a vote only, um, Penny, just make note of this. By Wednesday, have all of your items that you're looking to propose um, to Kenny by Wednesday by 12 o'clock. So that way he can create a document similar to the agenda. Labeling what I, each item is. And the rationale, he can link all of your resolutions or things in there. And then on Friday, um, I'll help Kenny just create a polling thing to upload for everyone to vote. Um, probably just the duration of Friday, so you can look at it throughout the time. So you have Wednesday, hopefully Wednesday evening, Thursday all day to look at the things to be voted, and then Friday will be the vote. So just make sure, even if you are not um, present in the meeting at some point, just to go in on on Friday and vote. That way we can set it up that way. It's it's a clean document with everything listed out. Ooh. Thank you, Armando. <clears throat> Um, <clears throat> any more open floor announcements? Oh, actually, I do got one. Um, yeah, just a reminder for those of you who have children, um, Knackland's coming up. It'd be dope to see y'all there, you know, and enjoy the event. And then if you have like any younger siblings or like cousins or anything, you know, feel free to bring them as well. Um, with that being said, we're going to be moving on to, well, faculty and staff, and it is not here this week for Denny. Same with the Council of Chairs and Directors. Um, we're going to be moving on to advisor updates. Dr. Brown, do you want to go first? Uh, sure. Um, I already talked about the inauguration. Just as a reminder, May 3rd, um, and I won't talk about elections. I'll let Armando and Sam um, share about that, but really last week, you all did a really good job on working on that annual update and annual report. So I'm just curious where that is. Um, is it in the SharePoint or the Teams drive? Um, Cause I would like to review it, um, but I probably won't have time. Well, I might have time this afternoon um, just to take a look at it. So that's one thing that I just wanna make sure that we're all staying on top of. And then, um, I think the inauguration elections and what else do we have? And there's graduation um, and just the transition. I think the transition of the new counselors, um, just want you all to know that that's going to be mine and Armando's um, 
primary focus is to help support that and building out that curriculum that we've been talking a lot about in terms of training and support for the new counselors coming in. Um, so more to more to come on that, but that's where that's at. And then just a lot of graduations and celebrations happening. I hope you all are able to attend Tuesday and the OSILA Awards on Tuesday. And then um, also want to acknowledge Armando and Mike and Alejandro and everyone who was able to participate in the yard show um, last night. I thought that that was a really good turnout. So um, yeah, great job on that. And then there's just a lot, a lot going on. Looking forward to seeing whoever's going to be able to join us tonight too. I think that's it. Um, I did have a question. Um, mm -hmm. I seen, or I think there was like a an event on May oh sixteenth. Do we have a meeting that day? An event? Or well, sorry, a meeting. Um, May seventeenth. Is that are we meeting May seventeenth? I believe that's a transition meeting with the new counselors. Am I right, Armando? Um, not that I was aware of. You guys keep mentioning that, and I, the council, the new counselors don't start formally till July. Um, if that's something you all want to have with them, you're more than welcome to to invite them. But they have no stake in the game, you can say, until July. Um, I don't know what May seventeenth meeting. Okay, I, I didn't. I know put someone mentioned it earlier that it's y'all's last meeting, but I don't know. Yeah. That might be what it is. I didn't put that in the calendar, so I don't know where that's coming from. But I know in the past, past student governments or councils have had a meeting and made it a transition meeting to have the new counselors in come and meet the team and kind of just have some time together, give some updates. They can hear, you know, what y'all are doing or where things are being left off at the end of the semester. But again, that's up to you all if that's something that you want to make happen. And then the other thing that's super important that I forgot to mention, I put it in the chat and I sent you all an email yesterday. Um, I don't know if you all know that I've been serving as the interim director for the Center for Multicultural Engagement and Inclusion as we've been going through a search process. And next week, Monday through Thursday, we have interviews on campus interviews with four candidates. And I put the open forum and student panel sessions in the chat. Um, and I also, I'm going to be forwarding you some calendar invites. If you're able to make any of the sessions, we would love, love, love your input and your feedback. You're probably going to be working very closely with this individual. So I really would love your input and feedback on who we're hiring. Um, I'm the ultimate, hiring authority in this situation. So um, I really value um, what feedback and input you all have to offer with who we're bringing in. I think the candidates um, are really great. So hoping you all can be there and I'll go ahead and send those calendar invites. Sounds good. Thank you, Dr. Brown. Um, mm -hmm. Kenny? Yeah, uh, just real quick on the annual updates document. Uh, just to clear up on some of the double documents that we're working on last week. Um, the document that I'll be working on will be in uh, the 2023-2024 SGT site folder under annual updates. That is the document that I'll be working on. Thank you. Thanks, Kenny. Um, Gabe? Awesome. So now that the topic was brought up, when is our last meeting? Like when, when will that be? Do we know yet? Do we do we have an idea? That's up to y'all decide. Since I've been on the council with you all, it's kind of fluctuated. It's typically always ended up being the last, the meeting right after graduation is the last one. Um, and then you kind of just do some wrap up work for those last two weeks of May. Um, yeah. I would agree with that. But it's really up to, I'll be honest with you, people just start checking out. <laughs> um, so it's a, I think it's important if you all set the expectation that you want people to be there, I do think it's important to communicate that now. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Let me see. Well. And I don't... your 
sorry, I'm sorry to interrupt, but and remember, you're also receiving a stipend for the month of May. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, I, I don't see a problem with meeting with the last or with the two weeks after graduation or the last two weeks of May either. So I think it would be a good idea, even if we keep it virtual still, you know, obviously, but. Yeah, it's just more of uh, whether everybody else is willing to. Do this as well. Um, John, you have your hand up. Oh, I'm on board with meeting in the last two weeks of May and, and doing what I need to do. So I'm with that program. Does anybody want a motion? <laughs> or our motion to have meeting the last two weeks of May. I second the motion. I'd like to say the last Friday of May. <laughs> it's the holiday weekend. I'm sorry. Yeah. <laughs> and then we start spring, you know, summer term for those of us still in school, mm -hmm. which stinks poo. So I would say. I mean, the 31st is a holiday. Isn't that Memorial Weekend? No. That's my point. The no? 27th is the holiday. Mm. I mean, I, I wouldn't see an issue if somebody wants to make a, oh, no. Uh, well, yeah, an amendment, having meeting the 17th, the 24th, and then the 31st, we don't have meeting. Uh, Re. Oh, sorry, I didn't mean to raise my hand again. I mean, I would love to move that. I don't know how everybody else feels because I definitely wanted on the on the 17th or at some point us to have a joint meeting with the new members um, and talking about, you know, the, the issue of really being involved. And I was going to suggest we do a brief write up of each committee that we've been involved in for them to talk about and get them to agree so we have as mike as uh, matt says a, a warm handover but anyway i don't want to i mean you all were close to agreeing to the 31st if that's not the holiday weekend and it's the one before you know it's fine i work every weekend anyway with my internship so just forget i said anything <laughs> all right well i mean if there's no friendly amendments then we can go ahead and vote on it. Um, all in favor for the last two weeks of May to still have meeting? Aye. 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 Cool. Aye. Any objections? Any abstentions? Cool. It looks like the last two weeks are still going to be meeting times. Um, and we'll have one of those um, warm handovers <laughs> with the new council. Can I clarify the last two weeks would be then the 20. The 24th, what, the, the 24th and the 31st. <clears throat> yes. OK, school Just, won't be in session, though. Right. So that's what I want to verify. So I will not be able to join you on the 31st. Just so you all know. I'll be at a conference. I'll be here. Because, because school ends when? Is it the 17th? Is the that 10th. why? The 10th. School ends the 10th. Mm -hmm. Is it not in our something? Yeah, constitution? It, is, it, is, it is in your constitution that when there is no school, there are no meetings. Right. Or when the kid, well, it's in the constitution when the campus is, when the school is closed. There are no meetings, and that was IE for like snow days and things right. like that. I don't know if you want to interpret it as classes in session. But I thought it was about class in session, but I don't know. If you say no, that it's not about that, then that's fine. If it's when the school is closed, okay. And the school is open, you're saying? Yeah, the school is open. Yeah, we still got to come to work, so. <laughs> yeah, we don't get to be up. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Cool. Um, I mean, here's here's the thing. Here's an I have an option. Sorry. What mm -hmm. about we have some work? You know, we still have things to vote on, right? Maybe we don't do that really technically challenging. Everything's online. We vote that through, and we we let that happen. We're still um, involved, you know, after the graduation date, 
And if we're able to complete business, right, and hand over and whatever that looks like, the 17th, the 24th, we don't need to meet the 31st. It's about being able to complete our business. Is it not? And it's just, I'm just throwing that out there. I mean, I'm perfectly fine with meeting the 17th and then the 24th and then not doing the 31st. That's why I suggested if anybody has like any friendly amendments, you know, okay. I'm more than happy. That would be mine because I feel like we're kind of dragging it out. I understand we're being paid and we want to do our best work, but if we're just meeting to meet, is that our best work? You know, <laughs> let's be real. So. Yeah. I mean, do you want a motion? Then I would like to motion that we continue until the 24th, making sure we complete all business for this calendar, this school year, um, and then finishing and handing over, you know, on the honor before, handing over honor before the 21st, but completing our business on the 24th. How's that? Sounds good. I second that. Um, all in favor for this friendly amendment? Hi. Aye. 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 Wait, um, anybody against it? Any abstentions? Cool. So it looks like we're going to be meeting the 17th and the 24th, with 24th being the last meeting. And then, um, Kenny, if you don't mind sending out like that email to like the new um, counselors as well, uh, telling them like we're going to be meeting this day so we can hand everything off to y'all and y'all have an idea of how everything is ran. Um, okay, so, so 17th and 24th of May, right? Yes, sir. Uh, Sam, you have your hand up. Okay. Yeah, we're still waiting on confirmation for some counselors if they'll be accepting their seat. So maybe like Kenny, if you want to write the email, that's good, but maybe just check in with me or Armando before we send it out. Okay. Cool. All right. Um, anything else from our advisor updates? Um, I think we pretty much covered it. I'll let Sam chime in on the elections piece, and then we can, <clears throat> if there's anything missing, I can go from there. But just I hope to see y'all at the dinner. Cool. The only uh, addition, sorry, I have is if you all can please invite students or bring students to open forum or student panel next week for the interviews, um, that would be great. Thank you. And then last but not least, Sam for the election updates. Uh, all right, I got kind of two main things to report. Um, I guess as you, as I just mentioned, um, Armando and I sent out an email to all the candidates. Uh, we have a deadline for them to accept or reject their seat, and then we'll have an exact number um, of who in this election will be taking their seats. And then we're also right now reaching out to a couple people who had like writing uh, uh, votes to see if they're interested in filling the vacancies for next year. Um, we discussed doing a special election in the fall, but realized um, because there's the U.S. general election happening, it's going to be pretty hard to get people in school to vote for stuff. So we're just going to use the the writing candidates uh, to fill those vacant seats. So we're waiting to hear back from those folks as well, and hopefully we'll have all the writing candidates confirmed by inauguration. Um, but we should have all the people who ran in the election confirmed by uh, by next week. Cool. Sounds good. Thank you. Um, cool. And as Kenny, if you don't mind scrolling down a little bit just so I can see the agenda. Cool. And then that's basically it for updates. We got nothing for old business, new business. I did see Amy joined us. Uh, hey, Amy, if you just want to make yourself known. Hi, everyone. So, um, yeah, the the spotlight is yours and then we can get started whenever you're ready. OK, great. Well, thanks for having me. I will share my screen. I have a, a short presentation for you today and um, time to discuss um, what I share with you, but also will give you a survey link that will be a place um, for you to put any of your feedback into or even share the survey link with others. So with that, I will share my screen.
Am I sharing? Okay. I can see well, it. Thanks. Yeah, okay, great. Thanks. Thank you all again for letting me join. My name is Amy Middleton. I'm the Assistant Dean for Enrollment and Operations in the College of Health and Human Sciences. Um, I was part of a working group that was formed as connected to the student success implementation launch to design uh, a way for us to have experiential major maps for all undergraduate students across all the departments, all of the majors at MSU Denver. Um, so our working group was a group of five committee members, and we were charged with really just designing um, a suggestion for the basic template for an MSU Denver experiential major map, and then make some recommendations about a timeline and way to make this happen um, in a pretty quick way um, for, for all students. Okay. So a few of the things that our committee worked on was um, making some suggestions about what experiential major maps might look at MSU look like at MSU Denver. Um, the first recommendation that we had was that they be digital. Um, so we envision a website where students can select any major map at MSU Denver and even compare and contrast different major maps to see, uh, to really learn more about what it might be like to major in a specific department and how that might compare and contrast to majoring in other um, academic departments on campus. We, um, we also recommended that there be some standardized university content on all major maps. So in this presentation, you'll see some areas that are highlighted in red, and that is our recommendation for standardized content. And then you'll also see some, um, some content highlighted in yellow, and those are places where our departments can really customize information for students. And so this will make a little more sense. If you're not familiar with major maps, I will share a, um, uh, an example of one in just a second. OK, if you can see that um, as our committee got started, we thankfully didn't have to start from scratch um, because our College of Letters and Arts um, Col College of Letters, Arts and Sciences already had gotten started on creating experiential major maps for their departments. And what you're seeing here is an example of histories. And so what I just want to point out here is that there's a front page that overviews the department, just kind of some big picture information about the department, what the various opportunities are for students while they're a student, and then also after graduation, um, what kind of careers are available to those students, and basic information about how to contact the department and what students are saying about majoring or minoring in those departments. And on the back side um, is the major map it itself, and this is kind of small. But at the end, I will put in the chat a PDF version of this PowerPoint um, so that you can come back and look at any details that you might want to look at closer. Um, but what I want to point out to you is just this area here with the, the chart. Um, they have identified different dimensions here. So cultivating, engaging, and preparing. And what they've done is identified in the early years, like the first years of being a student, what those uh, activities might be to really engage in these different dimensions. And a lot of these examples are things that happen outside of the classroom. And so our goal here is to really get this information to all students, very accessible, um, the same information out to all students so that a student could log on and get a, a nice overview of suggested ways to enhance their experience in that major. And so keeping with those same um, three dimensions, it has different suggestions as a student progresses um, in their academic career. So in those middle years and then in those last years as they approach graduation. 
And then across the kind of flanking that chart is additional information um, that is applicable to all students all the time, right? So things like remember every year to um, uh, do the, your financial aid work or meet with an academic advisor um, or, you know, access the counseling center or just different things that might come up throughout the entire course of an academic career. Um, so we definitely looked at uh, CLAS's model as a starting point. We also took a look at the University of Utah's example because they had it on a website and we really liked that um, so that we can update these often and so that we can have links like this um, out to other places, right? So if you were a student majoring again in history and you were coming across um, the major map and it was digital like this and it said, um, access your four-year degree, degree plan, you could easily click on that and it would take you to the four-year degree plan. So we are inspired by um, University of Utah's example as well. Okay, so just kind of zooming in a little bit to um, that front page of the major map, um, we're really going to recommend that departments have basic information about the major and um, any relevant information connected to the major, and then detailed information about career and alumni. And we like to work with departments to help them access alumni information because it would be great for students to see information like um, you know 90 percent of graduates receive a job within three months of graduation or maybe some salary detail information on this page as well just click forward so this is very basic right we're in the early stages of this but this is what an msu denver major map might look like so if you remember back to the history one, it said first year, middle year and end. We we suggest changing that language because students don't always have, uh, you know, the kind of traditional pathway of a first year and a last year. Right. So we reframe that to arrive or arriving, thriving. And then um, in the end here is soaring. And so we kept the same dimensions of cultivate, engage, and prepare. And here you see um, just a place where some standardized campus information would go and then some customized department information. And so how this would work is the university would identify standard things that would apply to all students across the year. And then the department that houses the major would customize that information um, according to what they offer within the department or information from their students. So the, I'll just briefly pause here, um, but this is an example of, or these are some examples. We have a few slides here of what might be on those pages. So this is the cultivate domain, and this is the arriving, the arrival, the early years. So the campus information might say things like, remember to attend orientation or register for classes, meet with your academic advisor. And um, since it's a website, students would be able to click on this academic advisor and it would go right to the place to schedule an appointment and then experienced department would have that customized department information right maybe their social media link or a link to their for the four-year degree plan for that major computer is not responding um, and then this is on to the engage domain still in those early years and just giving you examples of what might be on there. But this is really where we would value your feedback so much and and all students feedback on what is helpful um, to have a standardized content in this campus information and then we'll work with students within the departments to find out what's really helpful over here. So these are just examples, um, just a starting point um, to, to give you an idea of what you might see on these major maps.
and this is moving on. So then we're still in the early years, but now we're in prepare. So we're adding things on to here, like a link to the career link um, or a link to the C2 hub for all of the different career workshops and events that they house. Um, and also, you know, suggestions about building resumes and and then the department side will build on top of that and perhaps include um, those essential skills that those students majoring in that major will acquire from um, studying in that area. So I'll just keep clicking through this, but now we're moving into the thrive, the middle years, and we're building on those early experiences um, to more complex experiences, like considering adding a certificate or a badge or um, looking into study abroad or student travel opportunities. Sort of click through these career fairs this now we're on to um, preparing for careers and we're still in thrive so we're bringing in opportunities for professional mentoring or job shadowing or starting to think about graduate school working with a faculty on scoping out uh, possible pathways there and then on to the SOAR, the final years. Um, this is, you know, the standard things from the campus are remember to apply to graduate, meet with your advisor and make sure everything's on track. And then the department would put forward information um, specific to them, perhaps about senior capstone or participating in um, the undergraduate publication like Rowdy's Journal. Okay, so those are some ideas of what you might end up seeing in the experiential major maps. Um, we also, if you think back to that history one, it had all of that information along the outside of the chart. Um, we're recommending that we use that space for a roadrunner upkeep information with three under three main themes. The first being general upkeep, like financial aid, academic advising, just sort of a checklist of things to do every year, regardless, right? This is something that happens every year, not just um, not just in one of the buckets. Um, and we didn't want to take up the precious space inside the chart on things that are just general upkeep. So this would be on every chart and it would um, kind of supplement the information in the chart. So on to readiness, so more information and consistent links about the C2 hub, resume building, um, information about how to um, talk about your experience um, through storytelling, a link to career link, and then lots of information about well-being. So links to the rec center, the counseling center, Rowdy's Corner um, are just some of the ideas that might be in there. Recommendations for usage. So our work group has recommended that these major maps, since every major will have one um, and we want to have them relatively soon, we'd like them to be used all of the time. So in open house, convocation, in advising sessions, so academic advisors can reference them when working with students. Faculty can reference them in the classroom, um, perhaps even link to them in general studies courses so that a, we're sure that all students are receiving them and B, that we're getting lots of feedback and we're updating along the way um, to make sure that they're really relevant um, for students and making an impact on their experience. And so our next steps as a working group are continuing to get feedback and finalize that feedback. Um, and then the student success implementation team will need to review and approve our template uh, that we've drafted. Um, next, the academic deans will take that template and establish a timeline within their college and a process for all departments to populate information. And in that process, we're really going to recommend that departments work with students um, to get their feedback uh, about what kind of information will be most helpful in those department sections. And then we likely think that additional resources will be required um, for someone to come in and build these. Um, 
on our website um, because we want to get these launched pretty quickly. It will take some really dedicated work to make sure that we can get them all up and launched at the same time. And so that is what I have for you. I'm happy to answer any questions um, and also share my screen and I see a hand. Yeah, Matthew Rathman here. Hi. Um, I actually may want to connect with you even outside this meeting because um, okay. I'm actually working with IT right now to build out a resource app for campus too. And I'd love to see how both projects could work together or work with you on other ways to improve like that access to resources for students. Yeah, that sounds great. Let's connect outside of this and I could even bring you into one of our working group meetings. We've heard a lot of different um, different kinds of maps and um, you know, different kinds of maps and resource guides for students and we want it to be an interconnected web. Um, so we definitely want to have a good um, understanding of everything out there. Let's let's meet for yeah. sure. Yeah, the app ID we have is more to pull everything together, not to recreate anything though. Yes, excellent. Anyone anything else? else? Any other questions? Okay. I don't think so, Amy. But thank okay. you so much for taking the time and presenting to us. Um, yeah, I did see at the end something about a survey. Is there a survey that you yes. want me to fill up? So I think, oh, I see a hand and I, I to answer your question. I will put the link to the survey in the chat. I'll also put my email address in the chat and then um, the PDF version of the slides. OK. Perfect. You know, Amy, I was just thinking about um, how when students first come here, how it's so important to get them engaged at the start. And when my mm -hmm. sons visited other colleges before they came here, um, I, of course, just signed up for my program, had nothing to do with everything else going on when I, because I'm a grad student and I'm old. But I know when visiting other campuses, it was really important that each of the departments had something in kind of a theatrical venue where everybody could be seated together you felt like you were joining a community with the faculty in, in, you know all lined up together talking about what they do for your child what they do for you as a student you know and i mean you know that was at csu and that was you know down when my other son was considering embry emory riddle embry riddle down in florida and you know you just got excited and your kids got excited because it seemed like, yeah, there's an army of people that are going to support my kid. And, you know, having our little tables outside, I don't, because I don't know what really goes on here with that. If that happens in some way, great. If it doesn't happen to that theatrical kind of sense, I mean, maybe it's something that should. So I just wanted to add that when I was looking through as you were explaining things. I just remembered that from my boys when they started and how excited we all were, you know, for them, you know, when they were considering yeah. things. Yeah. And what is what graduate program are you in? Behavioral health. OK, so, that's yeah. in our college. Yeah. Yeah. College. yeah. Um, I totally agree. And I think part of what we've been talking about as a working group is that if we can start engaging with the departments and asking them to think of things to put into these areas, then they're gonna ask themselves, well, what do we do in all of these different years and across these different dimensions? And are we doing all of the right things? Um, or could we add something? Or could we talk to our students about what's missing? And, you know, we do a lot, right? We do have an open house, we have tables, we have different things, but it's still not reaching everybody and so i think it's an opportunity to reevaluate um th those things that are happening outside of the classroom 
I agree. And it's really hard because everybody's stretched, especially your instructors, your adjunct yeah. professors who aren't getting paid a lot anyway. But if yeah. you could, if, if each department could be encouraged to create almost an annual event and it could happen mm -hmm. on campus all at the same time, even, and there would be a buzz about what's happened this year for the program, what's coming up next year for the program. And everybody comes together, a celebratory thing. Yeah, it would cost a little bit, but it would really help to bring energy and enthusiasm into each different department, I think. Yeah, thanks for that. I will jot that down and bring that feedback to the working group. And um, I will put the link to the survey in the chat. That's what just went in the chat. And then um, my contact information is coming next. Um, and I'll throw the PowerPoint in after that and thank you all for your time happy friday have a great weekend yeah thank you amy okay. we really appreciate it thank you cool um kenny if you don't mind pulling up the agenda real quick Well, yeah, that's basically it. Um, any last minute things anybody wants to say before we motion to end the meeting? Cool. Well, I motion that we end this meeting. A second that. All in favor? Aye. 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 Anybody opposed? Any abstentions? All right, then, everybody. Well, thank you all for being here, and we will keep a lookout on the chat for the voting and everything. So, and then we'll see y'all later for those of you who are going later tonight to the dinner. Yes, sir. All right. All right. Later, y'all. Yeah, have a good Bye. rest of your day. Bye. See you. <laughs>